What you're looking at is a simple definition of a class in Java. We have a dog class defined with only one property, the name, two methods, a get name and a set name, also a constructor, which takes no arguments and temporarily sets the name of the dog to unknown, and also a two string that prints the dog's name. If we were to create a test program to create dogs, they would be alive for the period that the program was running and the dogs would go away once the program was over. But what if we wanted this dog, or any object for that matter, to persist between runs of the program? What if we wanted to create a dog and then leave the program and then maybe have the program start up a few days later and continue with the dogs that we've already created? Can we make a, such a dog that persists? The answer is yes, and in Java it's fairly simple to do. The two ways to do it are either by implementing what's known as the serializable interface or the externalizable interface. We're going to discuss the serializable interface in this video. The externalizable interface is a little bit more complicated. We'll make some comments about it at the end of this video, but that's outside the scope of this course. So to add the serializable interface to this class, we're going to do the usual implement keyword. Now in other interfaces that we've worked with in uh, Java, for example, in the comparable interface, uh, it's typical that we have to add some required methods when we add the interface definition. However, serializable is unusual in that all we have to do is say that our class implements serializable, but there are no additional methods that we have to implement to join this club. Now, you can see right here uh, Eclipse is having trouble finding serializable, but if we just go over here and hover over it, all we need to do is import the Java IO serializable. Now it's just commenting that we need to add a default serial version ID, and we're going to add it like that. Um, this default serial ID, by the way, is for some reason not needed if you do this entire project using BlueJay instead of Eclipse. Uh, we're not really going to be using this very much uh, in our project, but it just needs to be here in order to satisfy the serializable criteria. Okay, so with that, uh, we've pretty much made all the changes we need to make to the dog class. And now let's see how this serializable interface allows us to make a dog that persists. Let's look at a basic test class here, dog tester. We're simply going to create a new dog, uh, give it a name, and print it. Now let's run this now and uh, see what happens. And so we see that the name is printed by the two string. And of course, this dog goes away as soon as the program ends. So what we want to do now is we want to add a little bit of code to this test class to create a dog that persists. Here is the code we need to add. We have a try catch block here, and the reason for that is that we're going to be doing some file I.O. And of course, if we have any issues opening the file or closing the file or saving the file, uh, we have to be able to uh, throw some exceptions. I've used a generic exception here, uh, probably a little bit sloppy on my part, but for our purposes here, it should be good enough. What we're going to do is we're going to, inside the try block, first create a new file that's going to hold our dog. And uh, I put this onto my D drive, and it's going to be stored as a text file. I've just called it savedogs.txt. We're going to then uh, define a file output stream. And that output stream uh, can be used, uh, connected to this particular file and we can basically take the dog that we've created and write the dog uh, to the text file. Now, how is that done? It's handled for us by the serializable interface, so we do not have to worry about the particulars of how our dog is being converted into a text file, uh, and then we simply close the stream 
and uh, that's it. We're done. We have managed to save our dog. Uh, now, how can we use this dog later? Here, for example, uh, we are using another try-catch block. This time, we've created a second dog, and we have read in the information for this dog from the previous dog that we had saved. So here, we're using a file input stream. Notice that we're using the exact same file name here because we want to read the contents of this dog from the file that we had saved previously. So in other words, we're going to make an identical dog, or you can look think of it as a cloned dog. And here we are in the process of reading the object from the file. We have to manually cast it to a dog, and then we can save it in our new variable. Here I've printed the new dog, and I'm going to run this one more time, and hopefully we will see the prints from both the uh, old uh, dog uh, print as well as that's up here as well as the uh, new dog print which is uh, down here so let's run it again and you can see that the two dogs now show up uh, being identical this one is from the original dog that was defined up here and then this second dog is the d2 variable that we defined later now, this is impressive, but what I wanted to show you here, which was the main goal of this video, is that this block of code right here doesn't even have to be in the same program. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete it here, and we are actually going to let this program exit, and then I'm going to run a second tester program uh, that's going to rejuvenate this dog and have it show you that it's, uh, it can still be used. Okay, so if I run this one now, it only has the one uh, instance. Now let's create a second tester class. Okay, I've created a second tester class now called Tester2, and I've simply moved the reading of the dog information into this class. And so now, uh, going back to Tester1, if I run this, you can see that here is the dog's name showing up, and now here is the second tester class, and if I run this one, you can see once again the dog uh, is still alive here. So this is how we can allow objects to persist uh, between runs. Now I mentioned at the beginning of this video that there's another version of this interface which is not called serializable, it's called externalizable. And that's a little bit more flexible and complicated because whereas serializable saves all the information about the dog. In this case, it was just one piece of information, the name. Uh, what externalizable does, it lets you choose which properties you want to persist. In other words, you, if you have a, a complicated object with 20 or 30 properties, maybe you only want some of the properties to persist between runs and the rest to just sort of be uh, thrown away. Uh, the, using the externalizable will allow you to do that. It will let you specify which ones get saved and which ones do not. Uh, the other difference with externalizable versus serializable is that externalizable requires that a zero argument constructor be provided for the class. That is not the case for serializable. Uh, we're going to just leave it at that.